you know, I, I think the spectacle of hill climbing is, is kind of where motorsports and competition originated. And anyone who likes driving, likes driving mountain roads and they always want to go faster. It's good for me because I'm doing the same thing I always used to do, except I don't have to worry about other cars or cops. The rules allow you to be very creative with what you run up there as well, which is it's pretty unique in the world of motorsport now. There's not many places you can go and do that. So you've got this crazy road, which is really exposed, and you can go and run what you like up it. I mean, for me, that's like, as a car nut, that's, that's pretty cool, yeah. Before you've got electric division, you've got production cars, and you've got big winged open wheelers. So it's a catch-all. It's, it's really, it's everything that a passionate person about motorsport wants to see. I saw it when I was a young boy in magazines and stuff, and so it was this thing that was out there that was really old and kind of had always been there. And uh, Pikes Peak Hill Climb is particularly interesting because of its heritage uh, with the Unzers and um, the Donners and, and the sheer length of 156 turns in 12 and a half miles. It, it really is spectacular and it's, a, and it's an enormous challenge. It can be intimidating to see all the exposures, but that's a lot like rallying because in rallying there's a lot of hard things to hit right off the edge of the road, if not um, drive off the edge of the road down an embankment or a cliff or whatever. And uh, certainly the penalty for a mistake here at Pikes Peak is pretty significant. There's no runoff and there's no guardrails, it's just, uh, you know, a cliff. Thinking about the falls and the drops doesn't actually help you race up it. So you have to understand the challenge and then do your best to go and practice it. There's almost no place that you can leave the road surface and be okay. So yeah, you just have to drive a little bit differently. It's full commitment. Um, sometimes you may overdrive the car a little bit, but you've really just got to put it all, all on the line. With the fact that the road is paved now, um, it really pushes you to be very, very smooth, but you also have to be aggressive. And that's a very hard factor, a very fine line of overdriving the car or underdriving the car. Understand where you can push, where you're gonna to have to hold back. And that's something that I think young people who just wanna go and win won't necessarily have those qualities developed right away. So it's almost this putting the safety back on the driver, which is rare nowadays. It's just you, your automobile, and the road. So. You just have to push like you know how to push, like you were on a qualifying lap, and uh, never say die if, if you run into trouble along the way. You just have to keep going because you only get one shot. I've done a whole bunch of preparation for this, simulator work. I've done, done a lot of that with using a VR headset. I tried using the simulator, but uh, I kept crashing and then the rear wing falls off. I think at this point, I'm throwing in the towel on trying to do that and instead I'm just looking at my own in-car videos as well as fast runs from my predecessors. This is my fourth year racing. The first two years I raced on a motorcycle and now this is my second year as a car. Through all of that though, you're learning every practice, you know, every year you're learning more and more about the hill. For 20 years I've been road racing and uh, some oval racing. but. Uh, Coming here to Pikes Peak, where you start at a, a very high altitude and end up at 14,000 feet above the tree line, and there's not much oxygen, uh, it's a real challenge. But a lot of the guys have oxygen on board. It's fantastic. You just breathe through your nose and keep your oxygen levels up. You know, historically, when people didn't have that, sometimes when you get close to the summit, you get a little bit loopy and your sight picture starts to shrink and you don't think as clearly. I do run oxygen, I always have as a safety. Um, you find yourself focusing and you might hold your breath. Recovery up at altitude to get your, your pulse rate, your breath rate back uh, will take you a long time. Running oxygen just gives you that opportunity. Yeah, in a hill climb you're, you're racing the road, you're racing the mountain. But the adaptability and that ability to um, read what's in front of you is, is a, a huge skill set that you can then get an unfair advantage with back in road racing. Mm -hmm.